In this tutorial, I will show how to use visual scripting for simple game logic. The idea is the following. I have a force field over here that I want to disable when a specific object is placed on this button. In the world, I have my door object, which has a force field sub-object, which consists of a transparent mesh and a static collider. To switch the force field on and off, we can simply enable or disable the entire object that contains the collider. Additionally, there are two objects that can be grabbed by the player and later I want that only the heavy object is able to trigger this button. Next I have my button object here. It uses a physics trigger with a small box shape to detect objects that are standing on it. Right now, when I play this level, I can grab the objects with the E key on the keyboard and place them somewhere by pressing E again, but nothing will happen. So to achieve our goal, you first have to know how triggers work. The trigger object detects when another physics object enters it. We can limit which objects trigger it through the collision layer. But here we just use the default layer, which means that pretty much everything collides with it. And when something overlaps with the trigger, it sends a so-called event, which is a message which bubbles upwards in the scene graph. So it sends the message first to the trigger object, and if no component handles it there, then it bubbles the message up to the parent object, and so on, until it either reaches the root of the scene graph, or encounters a component that does handle the message. We can make use of this behavior by simply moving our button object directly under our door object. And then we can add a script to the door object so that it can handle the trigger event. Later we will see that we can also do this in a different way, but to get started this is the most convenient way. So let's add a script component to the door object and then we need to create a script class asset. We can add it directly from this menu. Or we can go into the Asset Browser, right-click and then select New Visual Script Class and type a name for our script. Make sure that it is also used by our script component. In our Visual Script Asset, we have this empty area where we will now create our script. And the first thing that we want to do is to react to the trigger message. From the context menu, you can create all the script nodes. And as you can see, there are quite a lot. It's much easier to find things by searching for keywords. You can type multiple keywords by separating them with spaces. In this case, we want to add a message handler. And all message handlers are called on something something. So to handle this trigger message, we use on message trigger triggered. To start, we just react to this message by deactivating and reactivating the force field. To do so, we first have to find the right object to deactivate. The script itself runs on the door object. Therefore, when the script searches for objects, it will search relative to this object. So we use the node find child by name and give it the name of the force field object. And now we want to do something. The triangular pins are the so-called execution pins, which define the flow of execution. All the round pins are data pins. Pins on the left are input pins and pins on the right are output pins. If an input data pin is not connected, it uses a constant value, which you can specify directly on the selected node. When the trigger message arrives, it contains the trigger state, which says whether the object entered or left the trigger volume. So to check which value it is, we use a switch node. We execute the node right away, and then the execution path continues depending on the incoming value. If the trigger got activated, we want to deactivate our force field, and vice versa. For that, we can change the active state of the force field game object. This node needs a game object reference, 
so we pass in the result of the find child by name node. So on trigger activation, execute the set active node and make sure the value is set to false. Then we copy and paste the node and do the opposite when the trigger gets deactivated. Don't forget to save all assets and then we can give this a try. And as you can see, when the player or any other object enters the trigger, the force field deactivates. And when something leaves the trigger, it becomes active again. Now we want to filter this and only deactivate the force field when this heavy object enters the trigger. For this demo, we just use the name of the object to identify it. But there are also other methods. For example, you could check whether the object has a certain tag. So when we get the trigger message, it contains the reference to the object that entered the trigger, which means that we can just check its name. There's literally a has name node for such checks. We get a Boolean value, and now we only want to continue when this is true. We use the compare exec node for that, and we execute this when the message is received. We then compare the incoming value on pin A against the Boolean value true, and we only continue with the rest of the script when the result is true. Save again and try it out. Now if we put the box on the trigger, nothing happens. But when we put the barrel there, the force field disappears. And when I push the barrel away, it appears again. So far we only have one button, and the button is a child node of the door. That's not very convenient, because it means we can't reuse the button. What we actually want is to have the button independent of the door object and somehow tell the button to communicate with that door. To achieve that, we give the button its own visual script and give it its own logic. Therefore, on the button object, we create a visual script component, select create new asset and choose a file name. Now we move some of this logic into the button script. The button will handle the trigger message. It will check which object it is to decide whether to continue or not, and then it has to communicate with the door. For this, we can send a message. There's literally a message called generic message for such purposes. And therefore we use the send message generic event node. This message has a message text and a value as its payload. For our purposes, we don't need the value. We only use the message text. We use two message senders, one for the case that the button was pressed and one for when it gets released. Now when something entered the trigger, we send the one message and when something left the trigger, we send the other one. Finally, we need to know who to send this message to. For that, we are going to use the global key string. Down here in the game object properties, there's a global key option, which I use to give my door a unique name, such as door1. Now my button script can utilize this to find the door object. So in our button script, we use the node try get object with global key and type in the name of our door. And then we can pass the result to the message sender nodes. To quickly recap, when our button script gets the trigger message, it first checks whether it was a heavy object and then it sends either the button pressed message or the button released message to the object that it could find that has the global key door1. Next, we have to adjust our door script to react to that. First, we remove the trigger message handling 
and instead add a message handler for the generic message type. Then we add a switch string node to check which message it was. And then again we hook this up to our nodes to activate or deactivate the force field object. Don't forget to save and then give it a try. And yes, our heavy object still toggles the force field, but the player and all the other objects don't. Now we can go one step further to make our button more reusable. We don't want to hardcode the global key anymore. Instead we add a string variable to the script. Deselect all nodes in the script, then you will see the properties of the script. And here you can add variables. So we add a string variable and give it the name target. And we check the expose option on it. This makes it show up as a property on the script component. So now when I look at the script component on the button object, we now have this target property. And this is where we now pass in the global key string. Back in our button script, we just need to read the variable value. So when we search for get variable, we see that there's even a shorthand way to create a get node that returns the value of the target variable. We then just pass that in here and then we can also remove the hard-coded string from this node. With this change in place, we could reuse our button and target different doors. Quick check. Yeah, it still works. And if we pass in a different global key here, then it wouldn't work anymore. We even see an error message at the bottom, which says that the script couldn't find the desired object. Now we can make this even more convenient by turning our button into a prefab. And we want to expose this option to the outside. Right now the global key is hard-coded on the button object, but we can right-click on this and select Expose as parameter and then give it a name. Under Prefab Settings, you can see that we have this property exposed now. Let's save the prefab and go back to our demo scene. Here we see that our entire button is now just one prefab object and it has this target property. With this setup, we can now very easily reuse our button and target many different things. Now I want to show how we could make our level a bit more complicated by requiring that two buttons are pressed before the force field goes down. First, we just duplicate our button and also our barrel. Both buttons target the door one object and our door script has to handle the logic that both buttons have to be pressed. So the door script will simply count how many buttons pressed events it gets and only deactivates the force field when two buttons are pressed. Deselect all nodes again and then add a counter variable to the script. This variable should be of type integer and it should not be exposed to the outside because it is just for the internal state tracking. Now, when the button got pressed, we use the increment node to increase the value of the counter variable by one. And when a button got released, we use the decrement node to reduce its value by one. Then we use the compare exec node again to check whether the counter variable that we pass into pin A now has the value two. And if so, we deactivate the force field. And when the counter got decremented, then it can't have the value two anymore. So we can just immediately activate the force field again. Save all assets again, go back to the scene and let's test this. 
We place one barrel here, nothing happens. We place a second barrel here and the force field deactivates. Remove any of them and the force field goes back up again. So I hope this showed that visual scripts are a quick and powerful way to add some logic to your game.